Welcome to everyone who is joining us for our 12th live webinar. Please note that we've muted your microphones for the duration of the webinar. I'm just going to wait a few minutes um, just for uh, the numbers for just everybody to get access and then I will begin. Perfect, it's done. I just want to say a huge good afternoon to everyone. My name is Chantal and I'm part of the mobility team at Relocation Africa. I've actually been part of the team since July 2019. And before that, I exclusively worked in the hospitality, cruise ship and events industry. So in today's webinar, We'll be discussing housing, schooling, and settling in in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. We'll cover topics including expat life, popular expat areas, average rental prices, um, leasing details, popular expat schools, and also how utilities work, and also and so much more. Um, I'll start the process by talking to the various sections of relocating to Ivory Coast, and then each section has an accompanied slide just for your visual reference and to follow the process. Um, during this time, please type in as many questions as you would like into the um, chat box, and then at the end of the webinar, I'll commit to answering as many of your questions as possible. Just a side note, the webinar is being recorded, and a link to the reply will be shared with all registrants later this week. Perfect. Let's start with an overview of the, company, uh, the country. So it's officially known as the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire, or Ivory Coast, is known to most English speakers. This country is located along the African southwest coastline. So it's bordered by Guinea, Libya, Mali, Burkina Faso, and Ghana to the east. Ivory Coast has got two capitals, Yamusukuru, which is their political capital, and Abidjan, which is not only their largest capital, but their, and their largest city, but their economical capital. The country was previously colonized by France until 1960. However, French is still heavily embedded in the country and remains the primary official language. However, today there are about 77 additional languages spoken throughout the country. Culture. Home to about 26 million people, Ivory Coast is rich in history, traditions, and culture. It's made up of 60 ethnic groups, which are subdivided into four main groups, which is the Akran, Gurs, Crow, and Mande, and they're mixed in with Africans, French, Arabs, Indians, etc. Just a couple of additional pieces of information. So public displays of affection is rare. So as locals believe that displaying emotions between lovers or married couple is to be done private. And um, you know, that's just something you should be taken note of. But holding hands and hugging and kissing has been commonly accepted amongst young people. Only a handful of locals believe in gender equality. So men still take the primary role of being the breadwinner in the family and women usually take the role of being the housewife. Another side note, same-sex mar marriages or civil unions are not legally recognized. They are, however, legal, which means that these couples are unfortunately not eligible for the same legal protection available to opposite sex couples. But all in all, Ivorians are very warm and welcoming people and they encourage immigration of foreigners. So that's always good to know. Uh, religion. There are two main variations. Um, there are many variations, apologies, of indigenous faiths within the country. Christianity still makes the majority of 44%, followed by Islam at 37%. Greetings. The most common greeting is a handshake with a warm, welcoming smile. Handshakes with men, women, and children when you're meeting them for the first time and saying goodbye is standard, it's considered etiquette. If you've met somebody before and you're on a friendly basis, then two kisses on each cheek will be perfect. It also helps smiling and shows sincere pleasure when meeting somebody to form and build relationships. 
Unfortunately, as you are aware, with the guys of the pandemic, these standard greetings are not in place and social distancing is being implemented. Now we're going to move on to safety. So Ivory Coast is a fairly low crime rate, but it's always important to be vigilant and to use common sense. But that's standard when you, when you travel to most countries around the world. Don't take unnecessary risks or tempt bystanders by exposing too much money or jewelry, or valuable items. Basically, just keep a low profile and avoid any over displays of wealth. Always ask before taking a picture and be careful when dealing with the military or the police. You should avoid confrontation with them at all times. At the airport, keep an eye on your baggage at all times and don't act in a hurry. Fetish theft is most common crime in the country and cases should be reported even if it's just for insurance purposes. And a side note, as a suggestion, always make two copies of valuable documents such as passport, tickets and visas. Keep one copy with a separate place to the original and leave the other copy with somebody at home or somebody you trust, which again is also standard practice no matter which country you are traveling in. So you should always get into good habits by doing the same thing. Healthcare. There's a variety of healthcare facilities ranging from state run hospitals and local dispensaries to private and non governmental clinics. Expats usually use private clinics that offer a fair comfort and up-to-date medical equipment and facilities. Ivorian doctors have a good reputation and many of them have actually gone to international medical schools. Large cities do have better medical infrastructure, so it's always recommended to go to a city like Abidjan for medical treatment. The country is also classified as zone three for risk of malaria, so there is a high risk in all areas throughout the year. So before you leave, or if you're forming a, an assignee, to, to, uh, to suggest to them to seek advice from either a doctor or a tropical disease vaccination settle a center about suitable anti-malaria tablets. This does, however, also include yellow fever injections. Economy. Being one of the largest producers of cocoa in the world and the third largest coffee producer, Ivory Coast has a stronger economy in comparison to its fellow West, Cape, West Coast neighbors. These two products alone represent more than half of the income of the country's export. Currency, they use the West African franc. The easiest currency to exchange is the, the euro and the dollar. You can also use foreign credit cards. They're accepted, especially in the main cities, but it is also suggested to carry a company cash with you. However, also to note, ATM machines are not always reliable to draw cash. And like with all countries, it's always strongly suggested to follow safety uh, practices when carrying cash in areas that you're not familiar with. It also is culturally acceptable to barter over the prices at marketplaces. But where the prices are fixed and written down, it's not as acceptable. But, you know, you can always try. Banks and forex uh, offices are open weekdays from 8 to 3.30. Some forex offices are open on the weekend, but you'll find them downtown and at the airport. Shopping. The main shopping malls in Abidjan are, apologies for the pronunciation, Cape Suit, Abidjan Mall, Cape Nord, Prima Shopping Centre, Placid Shopping Mall, Carrefour, Hyper Hyatt, and basically what's advisable is that you can get most Western items in these shopping malls too. So it's always a good sign. Transportation. So they drive on the right hand side of the road. They do have taxis widely available and affordable. They have two main ones. So they have in Abidjan, they have a yellow one and a red one. So the red one they use mainly for private um, private uh, routes. So you can go wherever. It's generally only a handful of people that are in the vehicle. You dictate where the vehicle goes, but it generally is a little bit more expensive, similar to like New York taxi system. Then you get the yellow taxis where the routes, the destinations are fixed. You have more people in the vehicle. 
and you basically follow that route. So because there's more people in the vehicle, it's a little bit more cheaper, but you don't have as much flexibility with locations as you do with the red taxis. So that's always good to know. And they also have an online taxi service called Yango. So if you want to utilize your app services, Yango is what you use in Ivory Coast. Housing. So suitable expat housing in Abidjan includes freestanding housing, duplex, apologies, duplexes and apartments. Some houses are located within security estates, commonly called CITES, which are monitored by security guards, and these are available throughout Ivory Coast. Um, we're just going to have a look at a map, just so you are. So there's three main Kokodi. Then there's Makoti, Zone 4, and then we have Plateau Velun, which is over here. So those are the three main popular expat areas, and they're about 5 to 20 kilometers from the CBD. So Kokodi is um, one of the top 10 urban commu uh, communities in Abidjan, very upmarket, abundance of mansions, it's pretty much where the wealthy business people, the ambassadors, and the very affluential people live. Very high standing, so a, a prime area for expats. Then we have Makoni Zone 4, which is Beatry, which is one of the four zones of Makoni. Beatry is a major landmark for Western food and has a fantastic nightlife. Uh, this small residential area, but it includes medium to high standing accommodation, which is highly sought after by expats too. And then we have two Plateau Villon, which is also a well-known suburb of Abidjan, very similar to Makoni Zone 4. Many expats live there. There's big shopping malls, very rich nightlife. Um, but the houses are built on stacks, and they also are very expensive, so be mindful of that. And then we look at our biannual housing survey. So we keep up to date with current trends and what's going on in the different cities and countries. So our latest one for Abidjan basically reflected in the table. You can see both for furnished and unfurnished properties. The prices are reflected in West African francs. So if we look at something in further detail, if you look at, say, a two-bedroom furnished apartment, that can go anything between 1.3 million um, West African franc to about two and a half million West African franc. And if you were to compare that to dollar, that's about $1,250 to $4,600 per month. One bedroom apartments, you'll see, aren't very popular. So there's not a lot of them. And also they're not very popular with expats too. So most apartments are actually two to three bedrooms. The houses are more popular to be three bedrooms, or four and five bedroom, uh, bedroom houses aren't as common and they're few and far between. Houses are mainly unfurnished, but you do have the option um, for, for, uh, for furnished properties, but it's, it's not as common as the unfurnished option. And most experts actually do find it quite easy to find a suitable property. It will also depend on their budget, location, size, personal preference, and company policies. If we just look at the leases, a uh, property can be secured within a week or up to 10 days, depending on the parties involved in the lease negotiations and approvals in place. But it is to be noted that despite the pandemic, the fix and the effects on the economy and the global market, it's had very little effect on the housing market in Abidjan. So please be mindful if you, any of your expats are going to Abidjan, the negotiation, yeah, the signer's ability to negotiate isn't as strong as often they think due to being post COVID or in the middle of COVID. So uh, because the area still remains very popular for expats, landlords are less flexible to adjust the prices accordingly. So uh, just a few other things. Um, the leases are in French. That is standard. They can be a corporate lease, which is obviously the name of the employee, or they're a personal lease in the name um, of the employee. Um, but they can also, additional to those 
prices of the standard range, we're just going to look at additional costs that the signee can expect to pay. So, like I said, the rentals are paid monthly or quarterly. There is also a rental contract registration fee, which is registered by either the tenant, landlord, or agency with the municipality, and that's about a thousand West African francs. Legal fees are not applicable. That is uh, rent is not vatable, but some brokers and uh, rental agencies require the VAT payment. Agent bookers fees, that's one month rental plus 80% VAT. Certain uh, service charges not applicable. Utilities aren't included, so that's an additional cost. White goods, pretty much what they refer to, like refrigerators, dishwashers, washing machines, basic kitchen appliances. Um, they're not included in the lease agreement. Property tax is paid annually by the landlord and not charged to the tenant unless agreed otherwise. The holding deposit to secure for any incidentals um, and any breakages, that's about two months rental and that's paid by the tenant. Agent commission fee equates to one month's rent and that's also paid by the tenant. Rental escalation amounts, there's no fixed amount in Abidjan, so that will be specific on the contract, uh, what's written in the contract. So there's no legal like 10% or 5%, it's uh, lease dependent. Uh, diplomatic clause, that's, it's not a standard to be included, or you know, diplomatic clause, cancellation policy, it's not a standard to be included in the lease agreement, but it is something that they, you can have negotiated as part of the uh, document. And then, in addition to the above, something that um, that we often find that clients aren't aware of. So, in Abidjan, to view properties, there is a fee, an upfront fee, which equates to, on average, about 5,000 West African francs. So, that's roughly about $9. So, if you have a, a large home fine bundle, these additional costs do add up quickly. So ensure that when you're doing the discussions of the home fine, that it is highlighted who's going to be the one paying for the cost. Because if you have a bundle that can accrue 10 properties, and like I said, on average, now you're looking at about $90 additional, and that's just to view the property. And it's not an isolated incident. It is fairly common amongst the culture of the real estate industry in the country. Perfect. Now we're going to move on to utilities. So the national water company in Ivory Coast is Sodesi, and it's the only service provider operating in the country. All, all properties carry uh, have a meter system in the unit, and it's carried by the name of the landlord. If the unit is rented out, that gets changed to the tenant's name, and these bills are received every three months. Drinking tap water is not recommended and it's advisable for foreigners to buy bottled water. But you can, however, as a foreigner, bath with the with the local water, uh, cook with it, you know, water your garden with it. So just to be mindful of that. Electricity works slightly. Um, there is some similarities. So the National Electricity Company um, is listed on the slide. I dare not... Uh, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, ECIC. Um, it's also a meter system. Um, the accounts are received every two months, exactly the same with if it, it's in the landlord's name, if the, the property gets swapped out to uh, rent it out to a tenant, the name gets swapped over. Um, so that's pretty similar with regards to water electricity. Gas is uh, it's used for cooking. Um, it's not you know, a national bill that you've pay off, the individual has to go to the local petrol station and basically refill the gas calendars, uh, canister or um, on their own account. So, you know, that um, the signee can arrange for themselves to sort that out. Then we have television. Most expects choose to subscribe to satellite TV. So examples are like Canal Plus, DSTV, Starnet, or TV via the internet, which is will not require installation of a satellite if really in place. Both options are widely have a wide variety of channels at a cost depending on the package selection. Each household pays for a state-owned television, 
which is about 2,000 West African francs every two months, which is included in the electrical bill. And then there's internet. There are three uh, internet telephones. So there's three major providers of mobile telephone is Orange, MTN, and Move. There are a number of providers of internet services, such examples as TrueNet, GlobalNet, and Orange. Internet connection speed varies on the package selection and also will be dependent on the area where the property is located. So larger current uh, company, telephone companies in Cote d'Ivoire, Telcom, you can subscribe to a landline and are just using a prepaid package for the major telecom providers. Okay, now we'll move to schooling. There are 13 international schools in Abidjan offering education in French and in English. Uh, these schools offer a variety of curriculums, American, uh, French curriculum and the local curriculum, even though expats children generally attend a private school, international school. 90% um, of the school, however, do follow the French curriculum. The cost of attending these schools are about I say anything between 7,000 to 30,000 US dollars, depending on the school and the grade the assignee's child will be entering. Popular expat areas are between 3 to 25 kilometers from the school. So, but it is important to know that they do have high peak traffic times between 7 and 9 a.m. And then again in the evening, 4 to 7 p.m. So this is just a list of some of the schools that are in Abidjan. Pretty standard gaining administration into the school will vary and will have waiting lists that are in place. Most applications will be submitted online and the tests and interviews will be required. The fees can be paid in the local currency, but the, the international school, like the American school and the French schools, do accept payments in US dollars or euros, should you have that available. On top of the basic school fees, you can need to budget for additional expenses such as textbooks, school uniforms, and field trips. Their school year most often runs from September until the following year, June. Perfect. Let's just remind for anyone if you have any questions based on what discussed thus far, please type it into the chat box and then I'll address it at the end of the webinar. Relationships are uh, very important. There we go, business cost. So relationships are very important doing business with locals. Initial meeting can often involve a lot of small talk. It's basically just about getting to know each other before officially conducting business. If relationships are key to business, then hospitality is key to building those relationships. So when you visit somebody's house, it's suggested that the signee brings something like a small gift possibly inexpensive and non-alcoholic due to um, the size of the Muslim population within the country and the city from their home country, so something from their home country uh, as a gift. But please be mindful that expensive items can be interpreted as a bribe. So that's just something that is a little bit more culturally acceptable. Business cards are also widely used and can be in French and English before given out. When receiving a business card, be sure to treat it with respect. This includes not folding it or writing it in front of the owner. Also, another important point when you're doing business in the city and the country, regarding dress code, locals dress very formal as the way one's dresses is directly linked to their social status. So if you're conducting business with the locals in Ivory Coast, wearing a suit carries a lot of value. Just some additional uh, pieces of information. So personal tax, signees do not personally pay personal tax. They receive the net income, uh, which is about 70% of their gross salary, and the 30% is paid to the government by the company. Taxes and other contributions um, are paid by the hiring companies. A work permit or resident permits are required for foreigners to live in Ivory Coast. Short-term and short-term visas and work contract visas are usually granted by the Ivorian Embassy, which is about one to three months. Long-staying visas is about six to one month, um, and that's given by the Directorate of ter Ooh, Torrential Surveillance. In case of a work contract with limited duration, a visa will be issued for a period of maximum of 24 months, 
while an open-ended contract or long-term visa is issued. Then we look at bank accounts. Uh, assignees can or expats can open up a personal bank account in Ivory Coast once the residence permit has been issued. Usual requirements are needed, passport, residential permit, passport photos, copy of the lease agreements, which the process will be done in the physical bank branch. Uh, all banks in Ivory Coast are generally good with different products. Some popular banks are like Bank of America, EcoBank, Standard Chartered Bank of Ivory Coast, Bridge Bank Group, Citibank, etc. And then if we look at driver's license. So foreign nationals can drive in Ivory Coast using their foreign license for up to six months, after which you will be required to gain a local driver's license. To apply for the local driver's license, um, this is done at their local office and new drivers must attend driving school before getting a local driver's license. Okay. We're now reaching the end of the webinar. I will shortly be answering any of your questions you have. Um, if you've yet to ask anything, please type it to me and I'll address each one individually. But all in all, I'm hoping I've covered a wide selection of information relating to relocating to Ivory Coast and Abidjan in particular. For some questions that you may require additional information on, I'll be happy to refer to a local consultant who's our expert on the ground and who's actually also assisted in making the information provided in the webinar up to date and accurate. So I have to send a huge shout out to Eric, who is our boots on the ground in Abidjan, who has pretty much made this webinar possible. Thank you for all your information. He's given us really good resources and we just provide the platform to share that on a more global scale. So fantastic. Thank you so much to Eric. Um, big thanks to him. Um, but if there is any other questions that you need further information on, um, we do have a website, mark, uh, an email address, marketing at relocationafrica.com, if you have any other questions. Let's see. So Agata, is public transport safe and do expats use it? My colleague, an international driver's permit is required. However, it's common practice for expats to employ a driver. Public transport is limited and not recommended. Taxis except for metered orange taxis in Abidjan are risky and often unworthy. The buses are overcrowded and best avoided. Hmm. Uh, so is public transport safe and do expats use it? Um, just from my side, um, we always suggest expats not to use public transport, even though it is available depending on their location and resources, but also depends on the cost factor. So if they have a budget to use private transportation and, you know, their budget does allow for it, then it's always our first recommendation. Fantastic. I'll just wait a few moments if anybody has any other questions. Fantastic. Like I said, if you have any other questions, you know, we um, I'm going to be popping up our information. So if you have anything, we can definitely reach out to Eric, share that information with you. But like I said, a huge thank you for everybody that's made this possible, our marketing team, as well as our boots on the ground, Eric. Um, we will be hosting our next webinar which is relocating to Casablanca, Morocco, which is going to be um, completed by my 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 colleague, Noshina. So uh, invitations for, the, uh, for that webinar will be sent out in due course. However, until which, we will also be loading um, a recording of our webinar to our YouTube channel. So, you know, you'll be sending a direct link to that. So you're welcome to share that to your colleagues if you're interested or if they're interested in any future webinars, you know, we can um, sign them up to our marketing team. But until which, thank you very much. Um, oh, we have one last question. Dale, you mentioned the safety levels was good. Uh, how has that changed since the war times? Safety levels. Um, so with the guard, 
Um, yeah, there has been, a, I think it was a couple of months ago, there was um, a political uprising in Ivory Coast that uh, made the news. It, as far as I'm aware, has subsided and things have gone back to normal. These, um, pol you know, these events do flare up and they subside pretty much as far as quick. But to give you some accurate information, Dale, what I'll do is I'll reach out to Eric um, and just give some more local information on what's physically happening on the ground. And I'll be happy to share that with you via email just to give you that accurate information on site. But um, yeah, no, I completely, I completely understand. It is a concern that we've had with uh, a couple of other signees. Uh, so my colleague, um, they've, so Rene has posted the political situation in Ivory Coast and volatile and demonstrations can occur unexpectedly between supporters of the rival residential candidates. Take care in public places and avoid crowds. Careful personal security arrangements should be made. Violent crime is also on the increase, including armed break-ins carjacking, muggings, and holdups in restaurants. Evening rush hour in Abidjan, Charles Bridge is particularly dangerous. Be aware of conmen and tells that arriving in Abidjan airport. There's a heightened risk of serious crimes after dark schedules and travel plans should be varied. Um, fantastic. Dale, you may mention I used to live in Abidjan in the late 90s. What is the total expat level these days? Apologies. Um, Dale, what I'm gonna do is I will uh, we will send um, we'll send an email out to you and we can definitely open up the communication. So if you have any questions, we can definitely put that all together um, and give you the relevant information that you are um, looking for. We can definitely get that for you. So uh, we have one more question from Corinne. Is it safe for a European to work, a woman to work and to visit clients alone in Abidjan? Um, I would, uh, with all cities, it's, it's still recommended for a female to be safe, to be vigilant. Um, to avoid going out by herself at night. So just to be mindful, if you can get a situation where you can get a male colleague or somebody who's familiar with the area to accompany you, you know, it's always advisable. But, um, yeah, I can just also get you some additional information on that for your situation, your case specifically. Fantastic. Fantastic. Just want to shout and say a huge thank you for everybody that's joined us in the webinar. It's been fantastic to have you with us. I wish you a pleasant Wednesday. All the best for the rest of the week, and we look forward to the next one. Thank you very much.